Ever since Civil War, fans have had one question. Was there an Uncle Ben in the MCU? To answer that question, we will not only take into consideration what happened in the movies, but also what the producers, writers, and the director have answered when asked about the topic. So guys, what we're going to do is examine the evidence, or lack thereof, of Uncle Ben's MCU existence. Sound good? Well then, let's begin. During this time, we had no reason to assume that this version of Peter Parker hadn't had an Uncle Ben. It wouldn't be until Homecoming when fans started to doubt of his existence in the MCU. It is true that there were no photos of Uncle Ben. Although this is understandable because we didn't spend much time on May's apartment. But isn't Peter's speech enough to prove Uncle Ben's existence? Well, maybe, but probably not. Let's inspect it. Look, when you can do the things that I can, but you don't, and then the bad things happen, they happen because of you. When you look at it closer, you can see that everything is intentionally vague even when it's pretty clear that he is talking about Uncle Ben. Right? Right? Well, we'll come back later to unpack what he really meant. After two adaptations in which Uncle Ben had died, it was clear that most people knew about Uncle Ben's death. And it's really, really clear that the people involved in this picture were tired of seeing him die. Yes, this is a tweet from one of Spider-Man Homecoming's screenwriters. Given this, the only reference to his death was this line. May cannot know, I cannot do that to her right now. You know, I mean, everything that's happened with her, I... Please. But as you can see, this implies that whatever happened to May didn't really affect Peter in the same way. Let's take that into account. That was a very purposeful decision we made to not retread that ground. There are little things that are said here and there that people can read into. What the specific facts are in the past, we don't, we haven't revealed yet. So as you can see, Kevin Feige is also being really vague. He doesn't really want to be held accountable to any particular origin. We never talked about showing it because the MO was always to not show anything we've seen before. If anything felt slightly similar, to try to figure out if there's a way to avoid it or tackle it in a different way. But that was something that definitely felt like we've seen that before. So as you can see, there was no intent of showing Uncle Ben's death, which is perfectly understandable. However, is that line confirmation of Uncle Ben's existence? Maybe, but it is intentionally vague. One thing that I want to clarify before we continue is that plans change. Pre-production is a very fast-paced period in which many ideas are thrown around, and maybe even written into the script. In fact, Hollywood movies usually have many versions of a script before they settle into the final one. So then, are the previous script versions canon? No. Unless it appears on screen, it's not canon. After all, we don't call Luke Skywalker Luke Starkiller, as he was known in the first versions of the Star Wars script. So even if this appeared in a version of the script, it's not canon. We did talk about there being a scene where May references him directly. It was when Peter was getting ready for homecoming, and the wardrobe she was giving Peter was all Uncle Ben's clothes. It was a nice moment, but we also knew that it would veer away from his arc. If you're going to talk about someone's death, you don't want it to be a throwaway. Even if this was planned at one point of time, this doesn't mean that it's canon. Anyways, it is clear that they were tired of killing him, but you can acknowledge his impact on May and Peter without showing his death. His death shouldn't be the only significant memory of him to them. So just based on Homecoming and what the writers have said, we know that they intentionally kept everything vague. And so these are the positives and negatives. As a pro, we have the what happened to May line. And we also have the reasoning of not needing an origin story. As a negative, we have the fact that we don't have any photos or that there is no name drop of him in the movie. And also we have the missed opportunities, which are opportunities of showing or acknowledging Ben's existence that just plainly didn't happen. We have the deleted Ben suit scene. Then we also have this scene in which May is really worried about Peter's safety, in which she could have easily, really easily said something about Ben's death. and we also have this other scene in which Peter could have also very easily remembered Ben. But anyways, the conclusion of this is that in Homecoming everything was vague, so there was still a lot of opportunity to acknowledging Ben's existence and death in the future. When people talk about Ben's existence in the MCU, they usually refer to this briefcase, a briefcase in which you can see PFP, the initials of Ben Parker, clear indication of Ben Parker's existence, right? Well, when the director was asked if this was confirmation of his existence, he said, 
yeah, I mean, we don't know. We never specifically say anything about him. So whether or not he's around, everything's on the table. It's how I like to say it. So as you can see from the director's part, there's still a lot of doubt and vagueness surrounding Ben's existence, so it's not really a confirmation. There's also another issue that people seem to have with Far From Home, which is the fact that Tony semi replaces Uncle Ben in the sense that Peter feels grief after what happened. So this is what the screenwriters say. The other Spider-Man movies obviously dealt with Uncle Ben, and Homecoming hinted at it, but you are right. In a lot of ways, the gravitas really comes from Peter's relationship with Tony. It's assumed that there probably, probably, was an Uncle Ben, and the pain of that loss is lingering there. But this gave everyone the chance to create a whole new friendship between Peter and his mentor, Tony, and to deal with the loss of that, which is a very powerful emotional event in his life. So as you can see, McKenna and Summers are also being really vague about if maybe, probably, possibly Uncle Ben existed. They acknowledge that they are giving Peter the gravitas that he previously didn't have in Spider-Man Homecoming with Tony's death, but they are not really explicitly saying that there was or wasn't an Uncle Ben. So let's look at the positives, the negatives and the missed opportunities. The clear positive is the BFP suitcase. It's not confirmation, but it's as close as we're getting. Then in the negatives, we also have the fact that there are no photos of Uncle Ben and that there is no name drop either. We do have a lot of missed opportunities though also. Mysterio in this scene could have easily used Ben to scare him away. And especially in the scene in which Peter is complaining to Happy about how bad he is compared to Tony, he could have easily mentioned Ben. It could have been as easy as saying, if I was more like Tony, I could have saved my uncle. So, you know, you could have had both Tony and also Uncle Ben being a source of torment to Peter. But I can anticipate that that's not what the trilogy has done. Oh, and before we go into knowing home, which is what I really wanted to talk about, I have to mention what if. In what if, Peter explicitly says that there's an Uncle Ben, that he lost an Uncle Ben. But we have to acknowledge that that's a different universe. So for the time being, we are not going to really delve into that too much. We're just going to focus on the MCU 616 universe. No way home. Before we go into this, obviously spoilers, but I guess that you have already seen the movie if you're watching this video. So you know that Aunt May died and that she said with great power there must also come great responsibility yes that was the original phrasing of the sentence but yeah she basically is the new uncle ben and that's not just me saying it because this is what the screenwriters have said about the topic this iteration of spider-man didn't start by telling the story of losing uncle ben we started at a different place with peter those words are so tied to uncle ben there didn't seem to be a natural place for it we weren't even thinking necessarily oh we have to do it in this one as the story started to develop and as we got to the scene with May, we realized this is going to be Peter's Uncle Ben and the words are going to come out. McKenna continued, you just leap over it, but it leaves so many questions and gaps. Some people ask, oh, did Uncle Ben die? Was he guilty? Are we losing that gravitas as part of that character? I think that's something we've always discussed. What is the deal with his Uncle Ben? It is a total parity. Is it one to one? Is it absolutely the same way? We started thinking, well, maybe it's not. Maybe his mentor is May and she's still this thing in him. Hopefully you start seeing this is a different Peter Parker. They are all different. They have had different origins. They have had different contexts. Chris McKenna also said that they realized after Far From Home that Tony really wasn't the Uncle Ben that they were looking for and that they were looking for someone different. You can, of course, pause it and read it. But I want to spend more time with this. Well, maybe it's not. Maybe his mentor is May and she's still this thing in him. A sentiment that obviously the Green Goblin shares. Norman was right. He got it from you. That pathetic sickness. So now that this is clear, I want to go back here. I think I talk for everyone when I say that when we first saw this scene, we assumed that he was talking about Uncle Ben. The bad thing that happened was Uncle Ben's death and he was, like in other previous versions, taking accountability for this based on his guilt. But what I propose and what I think that they have retroactively done is changing the context of this phrase. What if this was really something that May instilled into Peter? Based on what the screenwriter has said, 
based on what Green Goblin says in the movie, it's very clear that they are pushing the narrative that May is really the person who gave Peter his sense of morality. So I propose that retroactively this has changed the meaning of this one scene and by extension of Peter's whole origin story. But make no mistake, I really do believe that this is something that changed through time. I'm sure that when they were writing Civil War, they were under the assumption that in Spider-Man's next movie he was going to have his classical origin. Or they were going to skip over it but it was going to be assumed that there was going to be the classical origin. But I think that what happened was that when they made Spider-Man Homecoming and they focused on being so different and also on being really kid friendly I think that they lost the gravitas and darkness that sometimes, like in this scene, Peter has so I think that they tried to give that gravitas back to Peter Parker by making Tony his mentor and him feeling guilt over his death but that still wasn't enough because it wasn't his fault so I do think that at the end they decided that Aunt May was a much better fit and also they could use as an excuse the fact that they had other variants of Spider-Man to justify this MCU Peter being different and having a different origin. And I mean, I'm really not complaining because in this scene he truly becomes Spider-Man but we can't deny that this Spider-Man was different and that he really became the classic Spider-Man only once he lost not his uncle in this case but his aunt. And let's not kid ourselves, this wasn't the intention from the beginning, that's something that you can be very sure about. So yeah, I just wanted to make this video because it bothers me when some people say that clearly the MCU Spider-Man had an Uncle Ben. Well, no, he didn't. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Please sound off in the comments. And if you like this video, of course, like, subscribe and do everything that every other YouTuber tells you to do. <laughs> so yeah, I hope that you really enjoyed this video and I want to hear more from you. So. Goodbye, until the next time.